doctors to nurses to know. And if I'm unconscious or brought into a hospital unconscious, never ever administer to me O negative blood. Have antibodies to the negative RH factor in my system. It can kill me. O positive only, period. And that only if I've lost so much blood that I'm in danger of dying from blood loss. If I've only lost a pint or two, man, I don't want any blood products. Period. If I can't get compatible transfusion therapy for what was done to me, the ongoing graft versus host and the symptoms that I've developed and have now been suffering from outrageously for years. I know doctors think you know, nobody could survive that long. If you develop graft versus host, you'd be dead. The only thing I can say to those individuals is like, let me give you an incompatible blood transfusion, you know, three units of incompatible blood, and if you live through it, I hope you develop these symptoms. And be systematically denied by people just finding it too implausible that anybody could survive it. Proper medical care. can be survived. Graft versus host can be survived by God's grace and by willpower. But that does not mean that I'm not an excruciating pain. And that's what was done to me. Uh, I need medical practitioners to know. A, I was poisoned over an extended period of time by my psychotic you know, ex-wife uh, with decon rat poison. I have been unsuccessful in getting her arrested because B, the doctors, instead of reporting her like they should have, joined in with homicide attempts of their own and given me an incompatible blood transfusion. C, when I went to authorities, they were also so corrupt that instead of you know, investigating my allegations and arresting all perpetrators, they started having you know sexual encounters with my ex-wife and helped her get away with her attempted homicide and defrauded me out of a better part of my estate as a result. D, when I went to higher authorities, you could imagine, you know, the results. People rolled their eyes at me in disbelief. Considering that I should have, you know, been dead and all these people tried to kill me. They just can't imagine that God Almighty is greater than homicidal maniacs and that it would be his intent, you know, to have somebody survive it just to alert the general populace that these things are going on. But back to medically, if I'm unconscious, you know, do not administer to me only your blood products under any circumstances. I don't even want an IV put in my arm. If I'm unconscious, you know, you can do what you can to try to bring me to consciousness. If I'm unconscious for more than three days, then, then uh, don't do anything. I'll either recover or I'll pass. I don't want, you know, if I'm given transfusion therapy, as I'm requesting, with O positive compatible blood. And if, because of the length of time that it's elapsed, it causes me to go into another case of pulmonary edema and cardiac arrest, I want it clear that I do not want to be resuscitated under any circumstances. I'll go to a far better place. And I'm sure God is quite capable and has for millenniums taken care of you know, his universe you know, without me being in flesh and blood. So things will be just fine. I don't have any delusions of grandeur like I, I must be here in flesh and blood in order to make sure that you know 
God's will is accomplished. God's will will be accomplished regardless. And I frankly don't have, you know, such a love and affinity for, you know, incarnation in our rotting, decaying, dying bodies, man. <laughs> we just have such a love for that existence that, you know, I want extreme measures. No. I also never, hereby and will never give my permission for my organs to be harvested out of my body. Sure. It's a fundamental statement against this barbaric practice. And I think it's just nothing more than the insane demoniacs, man, trying to get rich any way they can off people's love affair with their, you know, whatever. And I still don't understand it. Incarnation. There's nothing in this world, man, you know, worth, man, I mean, putting somebody's organs in your body, man, you know, um, that was murdered so you could have a few more babies on planet Earth. Shame on you. Shame on all the doctors and nurses doing these things. I'd like to see organ transplants, you know, maybe illegal until there is an investigative body in every single solitary case, man, that can determine that the person did die accidentally and not hospital caused under any circumstances. Until that happens, man, as far as I'm concerned, it should be made illegal. There's just too many people dying prematurely, man. And there's just too much greed, unfortunately, now in the world. For you who don't believe, I want you to observe clearly these medical records proving I'm telling the truth about the incompatible blood transfusion and that it is quite possible that I'm suffering from graft versus host and what I want what I would want done if I can't express myself is for CAT scans to be done on my femurs because I mean, the largest part of marrow production and would most readily show the bone marrow plasia proving you know beyond a shadow of a doubt of what's going on with it not just the lab reports and then I hope when I'm alive to express myself or conscious to express myself or not and that arrests would be made you know, of Drs. James Joy and Dr. Michael Cruz in Spokane, Washington, and of the assistants that participated in the homicide attempts on my life. And then I would also hope that by observing my medical reports showing that my potassium was lowered and showing that I had alanine amino transfer ele elevations constantly throughout the time period in question. That that would be enough to get investigators to dig up the urine samples and the hair samples that I've saved. And I'm proving that my you know, now ex-wife poisoned me. And if that's not sufficient, then there's I'm certain hair samples on my body to this day that could be tested via the latest technology for these toxins that were in decon rat poison. If not the active ingredients, the inactive ingredients, the chemicals stay in various cells of the body for an extended period of time. And I'm sure I've got some long-term hair somewhere on my body that would show these things without doing liver biopsies. I don't want needles or being stabbed or poked or prodded. 
I don't want to be cut open for, you know, people that have to, you know, I just, I just think, man, a lot of our system is barbaric, man, it's disgusting. I do not authorize the removal of my spleen under any circumstances. You know, if certain physicians find out that my immune system is responsible for the chronic and severe pain I'm in. And I do not authorize you know, immune suppressants, you know, like what they give AIDS victims or anything like that. And I don't want to be, you know, openly subjected to other diseases and infections that are so rampant in our society as a result. So my medical records prove I'm telling the truth. And I've hopefully now created publicly a living well since I, you know, can't afford you know, to hire an attorney now that, you know, I've had my entire estate robbed out from under me. And uh, I've also expressed my wishes to, as far as I'm concerned, the whole world you know, for proper medical care under my circumstances. Because, frankly, I, I want to, once again, know what it's like to wake up you know, healthy, alert, and uh, ready to meet the challenge of the day, rather than every waking moment being an unbearable and frankly intolerable pain. The only reason why I've endured is just to make sure that the public is aware of what hell I've been through so that hopefully no one else has to go through it. And that hopefully, man, even if I'm not believed and even if the evidence is not enough to motivate people to become aware of how many people are murdered in hospitals every year in this country and around the world for their organs, that they will believe perhaps the next person, unfortunately, is there is another survivor or survivors. So maybe eventually, man, we get people motivated enough to stand up for our lives. I just can't believe, man, that, that people would want mass murderers loose under any circumstances in hospitals or anywhere in our country and definitely not sex offenders for police. And you and I know, man, that if honest men polygraphs were given across this country in all precincts, man, untampered, undoctored, uncoerced, true polygraphs of all law enforcement as to whether or not they're, you know, taking any bribes during their Stay, whether money or sex, that a whole bunch of them could not pass. And I know because I've traveled across this country that there are entire precincts that are corrupt in this nation. And also, just by the you know, whistleblowers and reports, man, that have come forth. And why these people are still in uniform, man, is beyond me. That means to me that the higher authorities are equally corrupt, if not more so. So I am alerting the public. And I think when we, you know, authorize people to go around, you know, in uniform carrying lethal force, you know, and give them, you know, authority to exercise lethal force against any of us, that they need to be people of the highest integrity, not the worst. But I hope the rest of the citizenry will agree with me and that we'll clean up this nation, man, from this monumental epidemic of corruption, man, and greed. I 
I also hope a plan for health care would be implemented. As I see it, man, I don't see how anybody could be against it. Save the existing corruption. Every citizen, man, is entitled, man, to the best health care possible at no cost to the citizen. No cost to any of us. Everyone, rich, poor, everyone, entitled to expert care. Man. This is a benefit of being born in this country with individuals that actually care about people instead of money. What I'd like to see. I'm going to go over them concisely, man. I, I suppose as concisely as possible just one more time how my medical reports show that I'm telling the truth. And, um, and that um, in as brief a time period as possible. Alright, so I want to go over how my medical records show that I'm telling the truth. By the way, this doctor, Dr. Tarek Hall, and disappeared shortly after running all my internals from the region completely. And especially after, you know, I started to ask questions about the findings of the lab reports. This was done in this lab report my pathology associates in medical laboratories in Spokane, Washington. And look at the date, uh, April 11, 2005. This is like roughly a year. It's getting worse and worse and worse, sicker and sicker after my surgery. Trying to figure out what was wrong. And before, you know, my memory had stepped in about everything that was done to me. Here we can see the al alanine uh, amino transferase level and are elevated again. They're high. My ALT levels, man, on almost every single one of my lab reports were elevated, never addressed. Is the normal range. You see it's high. tested because my various doctors, including this in specializing in internal medicine, this one, tested for hepatitis because I had all of the symptoms of having hepatitis. It all came back non-reactive. I later found out that that's one of the symptomologies of having undiagnosed Wilson's. And if you've got symptoms of, of having acute hepatitis and yet you don't have it. I also read a report that a false positive for mononucleosis that there was no way I could have gotten it 
and indicated once again undiagnosed Wilsons. The reason I say there's no way I could have gotten mono was because during this whole time I was bedridden. I was completely at home, in bed, sick, you know, for months before I even had the test run. No way I could have gotten mono. I was extremely ill. I was so ill, it was it took great effort just to make it into the doctor to get tested, to get these um, tests run. I later read, now, keep in mind, because I was sick, I was taking, like, the best supplementation money can buy. I mean, a lot of, a lot of Andrew Lessman's products with, you know, multis and, and very specific mental function supplementation. So, So when this lab report came back, and I'm amping on supplementation, came back with low, Potassium levels. Just inside the very lowest range. When I'm taking extensive supplementation for potassium, and for just to be still on the low side, I read that that rat poison, various types of rat poison, can lower potassium levels. Mine just happened to be lower during this period in question that I deathly ill. Now, I know for a fact whether people want to believe it or not, and my ex poisoned me over an extended period of time beginning in 2002. And it's when I started to get sick the very first time. When I started making money, decent money, I think she let up for a while. And then I think she started up again, you know, before I... I mean, I had a, almost half a million dollars in life insurance over my head, plus the estate and... She, and she was complaining about how stressed she was all the time about money, right? And she had, like, you know, half a million reasons, man, to off me. Besides the whole estate, which at the time when this happened, you know, was honestly, you know, total value somewhere between two and three million. Conservatively, you know, at least 1.5. Granted, with the real estate, you know, market hit as hard as it has over the past ensuing years, you know, it wouldn't look like that now. But in other words, she had ample reason, man, to, to do what she did to me. Again, the proof of the um, 
post-op lab report from, from Deaconess Medical Center the discharge summary and again for me Michael Swenson with the date and the time and uh, my white blood cell count and all my other lab reports will show within, well within the normal range you know, like somewhere between 5.6 or 7 so for it, for it to triple you know it's normal level and to be this high shows I'm telling the truth about that and giving me three units of incompatible blood and that they lied about it and in lying about it left me untreated undiagnosed sent me home to suffer horribly and die I want these doctors arrested this is enough evidence yes it is this is like finding a bullet hole in somebody and the smoking gun still in their hand damn it I want these people locked up rest of the results of the, of the post-op lab report confirm what they did to me. I don't want them loose to do this to other people. Once again, man, a different date, a different time, still suffering you know, from acute hepatitis type symptoms. Different hospital altogether. A whole year later, still in horrible agony. Retested, man. All non-reactive, just in case, you know, a lab made a mistake. Again, that's one of the actually primary man indicators of having undiagnosed Wilson's. If you have acute hepatitis type symptoms but you're negative for hepatitis. None of the physicians, man, no, no matter how many lab reports and no matter all the other signs and symptoms that I possess macroscopically and microscopically. X-rays, CT scans, MRIs, lab reports, and all the symptomologies. But no. I didn't even ask for the HIV test to be done. But they always ran them anyways. I suppose they just automatically test people for AIDS these days. Because every time I have lab lab work done, this is another thing that's always been elevated you know, or, or on the very high side in, of the normal range. And sometimes it's been over the normal range with my CK markers, especially, you know, as time wore on and I started developing more and more muscle tremors at, at night, man, due to the fact I couldn't find anybody I knew what the hell they were doing medically in this whole region in four states. And once again, here I'm showing a year later, and I still have the alanine amino um, transfer, transferase levels. The ALT levels are still elevated above the normal range. Never addressed. Again, that's one of the signs of undiagnosed Wilson's. Different date altogether. A whole year later. And so I, I went to Montana. Finally, I was, again I was bedridden, but man, I was desperate. So more than a year later, I, mean, I 
to go to Montana to get more tests run because I figured this whole region was covering up for what was done to me because I was telling them and none of the doctors would help me. Even though I told them point blank I was given an incompatible blood transfusion and I was suffering horribly. And they kept mocking me, insulting me, laughing at me, anything but to, to do their jobs professionally. Frankly, I believe they're guilty of conspiracy and I think there's more than enough evidence that it goes beyond malpractice to conspiracy. And I'd like to see them all locked up, but to be straight. And I'm not just talking about vengeance sake, I'm talking about for the public's sake. These people don't belong loose. Arrogant, proud, they think they can get away with murder, you know, and they've been probably murdering, you know. I know Joy is guilty as a mass murderer. I know that guy is. These people are well, way, way too practiced and they laughed and thought it was funny as, as I was dying. They're murderers and, frankly, they're mass murderers. They're sick individuals. Atypical lymphocytes. I went all the way down to Utah in, a, like, almost another year after this. And half my lymphocytes were, were neutrophils, according to them. And I found out that can indicate, you know, the seizures that I was having, you know, and I'm not talking about involuntary seizures, you know, during the day so much. It's mostly when I'm so tired and so exhausted and I'm laying down in bed and trying to get, go to sleep that, you know, that I have these muscle tremors, man. I don't know how to describe them, really. They're like, asymmetric, you know, type of muscle tremors, man, and sometimes, you know, my whole abdomen will, like, clench up, and sometimes it'll just be my legs, man, shaking like as if they were shivering, like it looks like I'm cold, and sometimes it'll be, you know, my arms, man, one arm and then another, and sometimes my neck, and, I mean, just various, you know, muscle tremors and seizures, you know, and it just not epileptic. I don't just like go on the ground and start shaking all over, you know, the place at any given time. It's most of the time it's when I'm super exhausted, trying to get to sleep and trying to relax. Some sometimes they call it dancing leg syndrome or something. But despite me telling them, man, I mean point blank these things, man, these doctors would roll their eyes at me think I was telling some kind of story or something? You know, why? Why would anybody make up a story like that, man? When they're, you know, basically begging for treatment in horrible pain, man. I mean, well documented. And, and, and none of them helping me. When malpractice is so bad that it's life-threatening, frankly, I think they should be locked up for at either at least negligent, whatever, aggravated assault, attempted homicide. But they're more than negligent, man. These people with pleasure, man, with pleasure, would laugh at me mock me, insult me, threaten me. Especially referring to these people. And I age man. They lied to me. That is kidnapping by deception. Medical staff does not have the right to tell people that if they sign, you know, this form right here, I, the patient, right, you know, admitting myself, you know, to Kootenai Medical Center, 
They do not have the right to say that unless you sign this particular form, you will not get to see a specialist that you've been trying to get to see for years. Namely, they told me I was going to get to see a, a Wilson's treatment specialist. And I thought for the first time I could finally talk with somebody that knew what the hell was going on and I might actually get the treatment I needed. They lied to me to sucker me into signing this, man. That is, by definition, man, kidnapping by deception. And they illegally detained me thereafter. It's a felony offense and I want these people locked up. They do not have the right to do that. They do not have the right to lie to patients in order to get them to sign forms. And that's the relief. But, but the admittance that they had me sign was coerced by deceit. I want the people locked up. We have to we have to tell medical practitioners that they cannot commit felony offenses against innocent citizens. And this is when I found out, you know, that my spouse, you know, was also somehow working against me in, in lying to physicians. See, at this time, I still didn't know, man. She betrayed me to, to, to these, I mean, sick individuals as well. At this time, I still didn't know. Wife, wife was saying all types of lies to him. Right here, man, I was telling them point blank. The reason I was telling them I have Wilson's is because they were trying to give me prescriptions that were mainly processed in the liver and that said specifically on them, warning, do not administer these prescriptions to anybody with hepatic involvement, liver complications. And all of my labs showed elevated ALT levels, including the fact that my CAT scan showed I had gallstones, and and one lesion was noted out of many, you know, by the radiologist on my liver. I was I wasn't telling them this because I was fixated or anything. I was telling them this because they were trying to give me medications that could kill me, of which they systematically ignored, mocked, ridiculed, slandered, and libeled me and kept me illegally detained when I asked to be released. I want them locked up. These people committed felonies. I want them behind bars. I don't care that they got little letters after their names. They've got to be told they don't have the right to do this to people. They treated me as if I was a, a mass murdering, you know, criminal, ready to lock me up for the rest of my life. And worse, they wanted to force poisonous, toxic substances against my will on me to ingest. What person in the whole world, man, deserves that kind of maltreatment? These people cannot have that right. They cannot physically force, hold somebody down and pour poisons down their throat that the person doesn't want to have, but that's what these people do. I want them locked up. They're criminals. That is aggravated assault, to say the least, on a person, man. That is worse, to pour poisonous toxic substances into somebody's body that causes permanent brain damage or organ damage is worse than if they had just started beating on you. That is aggravated assault. I want these people locked up. I want it, I want laws passed that it is illegal, illegal, for manufacturers, for pharmaceuticals to make substances that those Individuals making those substances will not ingest themselves, period. And the FDA, and these psychoquacks, and all the people responsible 
for forcing these substances on innocent citizens. They're sick. They're sadistic. They're evil. And then they sit there with their little letters after their names and go, this person's delusional. He's paranoid. It's like, I don't care what you call me. If you won't take those substances you're trying to force on me, then you're the one who is sick. You're the one who's mentally ill. And you're the one who needs to be locked up as the threat to society that you are. I hadn't hurt anybody. I hadn't hurt myself. I wasn't claiming to want to hurt anybody or hurt myself. And these people kept me locked up against my will and were wanting to keep me locked up for an indefinite period of time and force toxic substances that specifically had warnings of lethal side effects upon me against my will. I want all these doctors locked up. Especially this guy. This guy takes pleasure in destroying lives. There were people that I met that testified of this guy holding him down, assaulting him, forcing, forcing substances down their throat against their will. This person belongs behind bars. David B. Waite. I won't even call them doctors. They're psycho quacks. They're sadistic. They're evil. They need to be locked up. Page 20. I've had to deal with, when trying to report, you know, these crimes to different authorities along the way. I've had to sit there why they rolled their eyes at me and accused me of being a drug addict. Once again, ALT elevated at a different time and date, whole different test, testing location. Again, the seroplasmin level is within the normal range, on the lower side of the normal range, but anybody that's tested positive for Epstein-Barr will elevate seroplasmin levels. So for mine to still be on the low side indicates that what I'm saying, you know, about undiagnosed Wilson's is true. drug screens. I mean, they, they kept giving me, like, drug screens, man. I mean, uh, different places and stuff. All of them came, came back negative. Not on drugs, damn it. I don't take drugs. I don't like drugs. I'm not mentally ill. I'm not on drugs. You know, man, these people have been 
systematically tried to discredit me left and right. Because I'm telling the truth, they're lying. And these people are criminals. They belong locked up. They belong behind bars. They've worked really hard at discrediting me, giving me an, a misdiagnosis that's harmful to my testimony, so no one will believe me when I, when I say that there's mass murderers in two different hospitals. One in this group of psycho quacks at NIBH, Kootenai Medical Center, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Just because they're not carrying dead bodies out of hospitals, who knows what the hell they do with them? If they have, if they notify, <coughs> most of the people that were maltreated don't have anybody on the outs that care about them anyways. So they probably harvest their organs, you know, profit off killing them, and then, I don't know, incinerate them and, say they, and have the coroner say they died of natural causes or something. Who knows what the hell they lie, man. I mean, but they're killing people. And... And the same thing at uh, Deaconess Medical Center, and, the same, and I heard the same thing from a report of a person on the board of directors at St. Mary's in Spokane as well. That's like three different hospitals in this region, man, where hospital homicides are occurring. Not just, you know, during Katrina. Doctors and nurses, man, are, are not even fearing at all, man, you know, um, legal consequences. That, to me, says our government, man, is responsible. These people, man, are so arrogant, man. They, they sit there and falsify the medical reports just like, you know, corrupt cops falsify police reports and frame innocent citizens for crimes. They've been busted doing it, you know, down in L.A., man, the number of times. And to think that it occurs nowhere else on planet Earth is just plain, plainly being naive. Naive. And a bunch of them just dot, just outrightly lie in their reports, man. I mean, they just do no fact checking. Write down whatever allegations you know my lying spouse told them. I mean, just outright lies, man, and it becomes part of your you know permanent you know medical record. There needs to be more than just civil consequences for these people. They can't, they should not be allowed to just, I mean, write whatever the hell they feel like as total, complete fiction, you know, and make it part of somebody's permanent record without, as far as I'm concerned, serious consequences. And, 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 and if it can be ascertained that it was, I mean, beyond malpractice to negligence and or intent, to do willful harm to somebody, they should be locked up! They're criminals! They should not be able to just take, you know, the word of, of you know, somebody and just say, oh, that must be true that this person is assaultive or, or, or this or that just because, you know, uh, the spouse was smart enough to lie to these shrinks in order to get me misdiagnosed to discredit my testimony and the fact that she's been involved all along. And that's why she actually worked against me during this whole time that I was trying to report these murderers to law enforcement. That guy's, man, I mean, so ignorant, man, he can't even diagnose himself, man. No alone anybody else. The same thing with all of these, man. They're quacks, man. They can't, if they can't diagnose themselves, and when 
And they're wanting to give me this drug that I know for a fact have had many lawsuits over and has caused hundreds of thousands of people to die. And I didn't want to take it. And I told them as much. And they say, don't give these to people with hepatic involvement. And even though they saw the lab reports, even though they ordered it themselves, they still thought it was acceptable medical practice. I want these people locked up. Lock them up. I want to find out how many people have died under their care. I want these people locked up for the rest of their natural lives. For how many people they've tortured to death. And giving harmful toxic substances, man, with lethal side effects. just a, another report for the where the test was performed. And again, you know the all the negatives for drugs. nanograms per microliter, man. So these are highly sensitive tests, man. Highly sensitive. And all negative. I told them, man, that the reason I was telling them wasn't because I was delusional or paranoid or anything. I even put it in writing. I put it in writing. Because they were insisting on giving me these these medications that all three had lethal side effects for somebody with hepatic issues. Depakote, Seroquel, Quetine, Valproic Acid, whatever you want to call them. Wilson's disease, hepatic involved. You know, I will not be taking either of these because it could result in my death. I'm not bipolar or manic. Frankly, these people need to be held to more than just civil consequences for what they did. They illegally incarcerated me. They were wanting to force feed me medications against my medical records that show plainly to not to give these to me even though I told them in writing and they were smiling at keeping me locked up when I demanded my release they were in intentionally misdiagnosing me to discredit me because I was telling about hospital homicides occurring in this region these people are guilty of conspiracy they're also m guilty of and many counts of aggravated assault upon innocent citizens and also guilty of intentional homicides. A whole team of doctors and nurses. I don't care how many people think that that could not be happening in America, that they could put a whole death squad in place 
and then just have them systematically lie about, you know, patients that are coming forward and trying to tell the rest of the world to discredit us. But that's what they're doing. People are ending up dead under these people's care. They need to be, these doctors and nurses need to find themselves behind bars, as far as I'm concerned, for the rest of their lives. They need to, we need to find out how many people these people have murdered. I can't tell you how many people there I've personally talked with, so-called patients, that knew they were being poisoned to death by the toxic substances they were being given. I kept demanding my release and was being held against my free will. These people had the audacity to take away my freedom, threaten my life, and then wanted to bill me $1,400 to $1,600 a day for it. and talked about being held against his will. I had not committed any crimes. It is unconstitutional, man, to lock somebody out that has not committed any crimes, to, to be deprived to be, to be of, of life, liberty, or the, without any due process of law, and these people did it. They violated the United States Constitution, they are treasonous persons. They are guilty, man, of violating the highest laws of this land. I want them locked up. tried and tried again, man, to get these people to look at evidence. And they wouldn't. They just roll their eyes. Oh, you poor little mentally ill individual. Man. There has got to be some type of system in place that makes it illegal for people to be deprived of liberty. I thought that's what the United States Constitution says without due process of law. I had no hearing, I had no rights, I had no ability to set myself free from these psycho quacks. That wanted to give me life-threatening substances in their arrogant disdain. As Wilson's disease, I mean, I told them all, man. I read my Bible a bunch the past, past the days there. I mean, from the nightmare of being locked up under these friggin' psycho quacks. I mean, I did my best to try to defend myself. But, I mean, you can't. They, they've got you locked up. And they, and they, and pe when people, you know, on the outside, you know, um, might come in and you're saying, hey man, I'm being locked up against my will, then, then the psycho quack just go, oh, that's a mentally ill person, man, just ignore them. 
and everybody just rolls their eyes and stuff. It can happen to anybody. I'm telling you, man, they can do this to anybody. It can't be legal in America, man, to violate the United States Constitution for any lesser laws. These people cannot have the right, man, to just systematically lock somebody up that has, that has committed no crimes whatsoever, that has hurt nobody, that is not threatening to hurt anybody, that is not threatening to hurt themselves, that is not doing anything illegal. But they did. I want them locked up. I want them behind bars. They're sitting there calling me paranoid. I'm like, damn it, I've lost my freedom? I've lost my rights? You know? And you're telling me you want me to take permanent brain damage and organ damaging substances and you call that paranoid? What if it was you? I asked the public, what if it was you? Deny suicide ideation. I mean, all their language is all like, he must be suicidal. He must be homicidal. Their, their whole method of writing and their sub... I mean, I'd like to do what they did to me, to any one of them, and just, and then when they're sitting there saying, you know, damn, you know, I'm, I'm in fear for my life, I'd be like, you're paranoid, and just keep them locked up, and then, and then, and keep telling them, now, now, reality orientation, I'd like to give them a treatment of their own medicine. Take away their freedom, give them a harmful misdiagnosis, tell them they're paranoid, tell them they're anything, schizo, bipolar, whatever, and charge them for it. Give me $1,500 a day to insult the shit out of you, to tell you, you you don't know what the hell you're talking about, to take away your freedom and your liberty, and to threaten you with life-threatening substances. I want these people to have a taste of their own medicine. They're evil. They're some of the most evil people the world's ever known. I want them locked up. Lock them up. Insult them. Interrogate them. Patronize them. Discredit them. Dishonor them. Threaten them with permanent brain damaging and organ damaging substances and even life threatening substances and don't listen to whatever they say and whatever they say just use that as an excuse to say they're mental like all these people did. I have a right to be extremely angry. I might say that, you know, why didn't I mention the cops in my $10 trillion complaint? And it was because at the time, I was still suspicious that the cops were actually coercing my wife into sex acts by threatening both of our lives. So I wanted to get into court before mentioning any of those things of which I was aware of regarding the cops and my wife. Furthermore, I didn't know at that time my wife's involvement with all of the previous events, including the hospital homicide attempt at Deaconess and then the betrayal at NIBH to discredit me. It wasn't until after our divorce was finalized that she had the audacity to boast to my face 
of screwing some two dozen cops in the Sam Point and Bonner County region and as far as some cops all the way in Spokane that I would never be able to get her arrested as a result so far she's been right she succeeded in not only poisoning me over an extended period of time betraying me to mass murdering doctors and nurses at Deaconess then betraying me to homicidal psycho quacks at NIBH and then successfully defrauding me out of the better part of our estate and leaving me in horrible agonizing daily pain severely disabled fighting for my life and for the lives of others so now I'm telling the full story of how it all evolved it started with one greedy sick individual the person I married who introduced me to more sick greedy individuals doctors and nurses who introduced me to more depraved individuals that would rather get their wee wee sucked on than uphold the law who introduced me to even more sick individuals mass corruption mass depravity God couldn't be more true when he said there's no one righteous save Christ so when I say I only trust God it's only keeping the proverb that says wise is the man who puts his trust in God and foolish is the man who puts his trust in men nevertheless I'm asking God to move upon individuals that are as outraged as I am against people choosing to do excessive evil in places of public trust and help me stop these people so that others do not suffer as I am this day